In the last video, we looked at variations of the trigonal bipyramid shape and what happens to the shape when you replace bonds with lone pairs of electrons. In this video, I want to look at what happens to the octahedral shape when we do the same. I want to look at two molecules, chlorine pentafluoride and xenon tetrafluoride. ClF5. All of these are halogens, so the chlorine has got seven. The fluorine's got seven, so that's 35, so 42 electrons. Fluorine in the middle, and five fluorines around it. That's 10 electrons that I just used. So I have 32 left. I can put six on each of the fluorines. And that's 30 electrons, so I have two remaining electrons that are going to go on the chlorine. So here you see six sites on the central atom, five of which are bonds and one's a lone pair. XeF4, eight valence electrons in the xenon, seven in each of the fluorines, so that's 28. So I have 36 electrons to play with here. Xenon in the middle, fluorine, 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 fluorine. I just used eight electrons. So I have 28 left. I can put six on each of the fluorines. And that's 24. So I'll have four electrons left. And the only place I can put them is on the xenon. So once again, six sites on the central atom. This time four bonds and two lone pairs. As we've seen, when you have six sites on the central atom, you get this octahedral shape. But in our ClF5 molecule, we replaced one of the bonds with a lone pair. Unlike the trigonal bipyramid, it doesn't matter which bond you replaced. All of them are equivalent to start. All of them have that 90 degree bond angle. So there's not one spot better than the other. You can see by replacing a bond with a lone pair, you've changed the shape. I can hide the lone pair and you end up with something that looks like this. It still has an electron geometry of an octahedral shape, but the molecular geometry or the name of this shape is a square pyramid. It's a pyramid shape, but with a square base. The bond angles are still 90 degrees or 180 degrees if you were to go across. But as we know, once you introduce a lone pair, the lone pair would add some repulsive forces, so these bond angles would be squeezed down a little bit less than 90 degrees or a little bit less than 180. Now let's take a look at the XeF4. This was again an octahedral shape, but we removed two of the bonds and replaced them both with lone pairs. Here it does matter where you put the lone pair, because remember the lone pairs are most repulsive. So once you put a lone pair on one side of the molecule, the next lone pair is going to go as far away as possible. So it's going to go directly on the opposite side. Still six sites on the central atom, but now four bonds and two lone pairs. This shape is called a square planar shape. It's a square shape, but it's the flat shape. It's all on a plane. As we would expect, the bond angles would be 90 degrees or 180 degrees if you were to go across the middle. And because your lone pairs are on opposite sides, they actually kind of cancel each other out. So the bond angles don't flex here. They're exactly 90 degrees and exactly 180 degrees. You can get other shapes as well. You can remove another bond and replace it with a lone pair. And now you get that T shape again that we saw with our trigonal bipyramid. And if you replaced another bond with a lone pair, you can get a linear shape again with your octahedral. Well, those are shapes that we saw in our trigonal bipyramid.